I'm going to dice an onion. That's always good to know. I'm just going to put a little olive oil in the pot. And you've just heard all the virtues of olive oil. Not even a tenth of the virtues of olive oil, but a I couple don't want of that them. Yet. I'm just setting this off to the side oh, for great. you. Great, thank you. Oh, I forgot to put the pepper in the salad. Put pepper in it too if you want. Yeah. <laughs> fresh grinded, but don't use that stuff that you just toss in. If you anytime you can use fresh herbs. So I'm anytime. cutting off the end away from the root. I'm gonna cut through it. Switch knives. Wait, oh, this is this is okay. I was thinking it wasn't very sharp. Um, peel back the um, skin. The skin part, which is don't need that. It's been protecting it against all the little bugs as it grows. We like to recommend that most of the root vegetables that we use are um, produced organically because of the um, high pesticide residue. Then I'm going to cut in a pretty much slightly angled li uh, line straight down to the board, almost all the way through to the root end. Now this is a beautiful big onion. I'm just going to turn this up a bit. And again, as Kathy was saying, we like to do things assembly line style. If you find that onions, particularly at this time of the year before the new season onions are in the market, they tend to make you cry. So if you have that problem, put them in the fridge about oh, 10 to 15 minutes before you cut them and that will reduce the um, allele sulfites from escaping and making you cry, but do not keep them in the refrigerator. Now I'm going to cut across. If you keep them in the refrigerator, the, the texture becomes um, sort of porous and it's not very nice. Now we don't have to worry too much about how fantastically we cut these onions. I might just get those into the pot. We want it to sizzle. Yes. Hey. Sizzle. So we're developing a, a delicious caramelization. There's quite a lot of sugar in onions. Good sugar. Good sugar, right. So, and Kinda this is more energy. This is more than a cup and a half, but if you've got a big onion and you don't have another purpose for it, go for it. Use the whole thing. Or if you want to put it aside for something else, at this point, by all means, refrigerate it, but just don't store them in the refrigerator. Also, don't store them near your potatoes because one will increase the deterioration of the other. And store them out of the light in a cool, airy spot. So there we have our fabulous onions. So we're just going to speed this process up so that you're not here for all the minutes that it takes. No, normally that they would saute for five minutes, so let's pretend that happened. So now in goes the garlic. If you chop your garlic up a little in advance, you get more benefits from the nutrients in it. We've just learned that we keep, you know, nutrition um, is such an evolving science. It's great to learn <coughs> all these wonderful little tips to get the very, very best out of our food. Then, after that has sautéed for five more minutes, zoom zoom, in <laughs> goes the celery. <laughs> and then we'll stir that around and we're developing all these delicious flavours. This is cooking in the, in the um, French style of layering, which is also very similar to the Asian style. Then in goes our um, chopped fresh ginger root. Wonderful for seasickness, for uh, cleaning out your sinuses, just it's always available in the market, exactly. delicious. So zoom zoom, that went all happened and through the magic of television we have it all <laughs> and you can see, you saw the volume that, that was just there. Now look, this is after it's had the increments of cooking time that you will do when you make this at home. Lindsay, could you just tip that up a little so they can see the volume? Great. There. Can we, can we get a shot? Oh, toward the face. Yes. Scott. 
Okay. Is that good? Is that, yeah, th thank you. You're really welcome. Cooks Thanks, down. Stacey. It really, really cooks down. Oops, it went off. That, that's back on again. Tricky little thing. So now we're going to start seasoning it to this beautiful, warm melange of uh, sauteed vegetables. We're going to add some curry powder. This is a wonderful way to just slightly cook the curry powder without too much liquid to bring up the flavor and in, um, sort of get it into the vegetables, absorbed into the vegetables. Now we're going to add our carrots. And this is eight carrots. They go in there. And then that gets stirred around. Carrots, fabulous source of better carotene. Delicious, crunchy, wonderful cooked, wonderful raw. And then to that, we're going to add our six cups of vegetable broth. We like to look at the um, label, particularly for the sodium in vegetable broths. They can be really, really high. This is quite a good one, Kitchen Basics. Um, and it is on lower on the lower side of sodium. You can also make your own. That would be the best scenario entirely, making your own. And it really doesn't take a lot. You could sort of devote um, a, a couple of hours at a weekend once every few months and you can have some fabulous um, homemade chicken and vegetable stock. Now I'm going to add just a quarter of a cup of long grain rice. And we do choose the white rice. This amount of rice is not going to impact the um, benefits from the fiber. And we really want it, we don't want you having to wait, you know, 40 minutes for this to cook when really only the vegetables only take 20 minutes. So then. It acts as a thickener. It acts as sort of a binder to keep, instead of thickening with uh, wheat flour or something like that, you can, the, the rice just sort of holds it all together. Or egg yolks, which oh, the French do, no. you know, we know that. Uh, we don't do that. So <laughs> anyway, zoom zoom, guess what <laughs> happened? <laughs> don't you love it? Let me move that so you don't step in it. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And so this is all ready and I will turn it off. Oh wait, can you show in the pot? So yes. That so this right is here and there. There we go. Can you see that? It's all cooked and ready, ready to puree. And we want it warm, we don't want it steaming hot. You can use an immersion blender, which is what I'm going to do today. And then you'll get more of a country version of the soup, a little few chunks here and there. Or you can pop it in a blender, but, but do take care when blending hot liquids, because it can shoot up um, and burn you and put a stain on the ceiling and God knows what else. So <laughs> uh, I'm starting on low. I'm just going to get this into a nice, now I'm going to, since it didn't explode, I went on high. It's a great tool, really worth investing. We got this one from Gordon Foods. Just a few more little scrunchies. This is a great, great tool. Because you don't have to transfer it into another bowl and into a blender and into another thing and then back into the pot to heat it up. It really works wonderfully for soups so, and sauces. I like make all I my tomato sauce like that. Like I said, this is a little more on the countryside. So now, in goes the wonderful creamy um, texture of the coconut milk. And for people who are sensitive to soy milk or are um, lactose intolerant, this is a wonderful option. Delicious. That's the creamy, reduced fat one. That's the reduced fat but one. But the fat in coconut, which is a saturated fat, is a medium chain fat and has actually been uh, shown to be have, have very good health benefits. It's not atherogenic or it doesn't cause plaque formation in your arteries. So then we're Coconut going to... Coconut used to get a bad rap. Now this soup freezes magnificently. Um, it is vegetarian. Did you put the curry? Oh yeah, we guess Oh, did. I did. Long ago. I don't know what this little one is. Oh, that was, that was uh, for the other one. Bonus then. curry. Bonus curry. <laughs> um, or did I put it in this one? I think you did. I smelled yeah. it. 
I think Good. I even heard so somebody now, say they smelled it. So <laughs> now, um, it's nice to do a little garnish. You could do a little swirl of, no, you, if you want to keep it dairy free, you don't want to put the yogurt thing in there. But if you, if you didn't want to keep it dairy free, you could do a little, pretty little swirl of yogurt on top. But even just a sprinkle of cilantro there. Doesn't that look or beautiful? Or parsley, if you hate cilantro. Yes. <laughs> or chives, Or even. chives. That's what we're going to do on the yes. uh, next soup. So, here we go. This it's beautiful. It's delicious. delicious. It's quick. It freezes well. One of our favorite things to do is to um, <laughs> um, pack soups in these uh, type of freezable Containers, they, they have these at Costco now, four or five or six for, I think four or six for $17, and they have a snap-on lid. And these can go right from the freezer into the oven or the microwave, and, and they're great, and they hold a pretty good size serving, so we love things like this. We do, and I meant to show you, this is what a ginger root looks like, and you should always choose a really firm one without wrinkles and you peel it and then chop it up, or you can just use your little microplane grater and grate it. Any questions? How do you peel it? Okay, I have the microphone, so I'm heading over that way. I can just re repeat it. How do you peel the, the ginger root? You scrape it with a little paring knife just to get the very, very thin skin off it. Or a little vegetable peeler works or a great veg too. Uh, yeah, both. Do we have another question? 